गुड मॉर्निंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम यू टू द प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑर्गेनाइज बाय प्रोमोलेक्स मिशन मॉनिटरिंग द इलेक्शंस फॉर द पोजीशन ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द रिपब्लिक ऑफ मोल्डोवा एंड नाउ आई विल प्रेजेंट द मेन फाइंडिंग्स विथ रिगार्ड्स टू द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड कॉन्डक्ट of the campaign activities for the second round of the election which is to take place on 15th of November 2020 the monitoring period the general monitoring period described in report number 7 is between 2 and 11th of November 2020 as for the estimation and assessment of the spending on the base which or, or the funds that were used to fund the election campaign it covers only the first week second to 6th of november 2020 i reiterate and i would like to express our sincere gratitude to our partners Uh, which support financially and technically the Promolex observation mission so uh, we have to underline the uh, support of the US agency for international development USAID uh, Soros uh, Foundation Moldova which co-funds the mission by monitoring uh, the um, uh, hate speech by providing support and the necessary protection equipment for promolex observers for the short term uh, observers and last but not least for contributing uh, and helping us to increase the number of uh, observers uh, who will observe the election process abroad council of europe uh, which is uh, funding the aspects related to monitoring in at least uh, 50 polling stations set up abroad and last but not least would like to extend our gratitude to our partners european platform for democratic elections which help us with uh, translation and uh, promoting uh, at the international level the activities and press conferences organized by uh, Promolex election monitoring mission i will repeat the purpose of the report the public reports developed by Promolex first they have the goal to prevent certain irregularities in the future already probably for the next elections also to inform the public the audience about what promolex observers have noticed uh, with regards to the organization of the presidential elections if necessary the central election committee uh, commission as the supreme electoral body in charge of managing the elections to notify it about the facts that uh, the central electoral commission believes uh, that they are certain violations and need to be reviewed separately we would like to mention one more time that everything that is stated in the public reports and uh, mentioned during the press conference is the opinion of uh, Promolex observation mission and cannot be regarded by any means as the opinion of our partners and our donors some traditional uh, issues related to the legal framework first we have to reiterate the lack of clarity that persists in the electoral code with regards to the date when the second uh, round of election starts meaning when on what date we can say and the electoral contenders can start the election campaign on the other hand uh, as a reference point we take the decision of the central electoral commission of, uh, of 4th november 2020 when the results of the first round were 
um, established as final ones and uh, decided that we will have the second round of the election. In October, the Central Electoral Commission adopted some amendments to the regulation on the funding of electoral campaigns and established as a reference point as for the possibility to spend uh, funds and um, the Central Electoral Commission um, decided that there will be a second round. As for the activity of the electoral bodies, we have to underline that the Central Electoral Commission passed 23 decisions to organize the second round of elections, of which 11 are about the accreditation of observers. The others are about um, conduct of uh, the elections in polling stations abroad, increasing the number of uh, ballot papers, um, issues related to the organization, and um, establishing proper conditions for special categories of uh, voters. It is about um, Uh, about um, avoiding organized uh, transportation of voters li like it happened in the first round and uh, authorization of an exit poll. If we are to speak about um, accreditation of observers, in addition to the figures announced in the previous press conference, other 120 national observers and 22 international observers were accredited. The observers uh, found a number of changes uh, in the uh, district electoral councils membership. Uh, also, we have found at least two situations where, where there was a change and practically two, uh, uh, two precinct electoral bureaus were established in new. Uh, because uh, a COVID case was uh, found among its members. And here we have to underline that, in our opinion, it is not possible to establish a bureau or an electoral body anew for the second round. Uh, the only thing possible is to replace uh, the members. The activities of the um, uh, this. Uh, district electoral councils and precinct electoral bureaus in terms of uh, complying with uh, epidemiological requirements set in the guidelines and decisions of the central electoral commissions. Well, they are not complied with. So there are still drawbacks, but nevertheless, um, both the precinct electoral bureaus and district electoral councils have a lower number of irregularities found by observers. As for the um, working schedule of bureaus, of electoral bureaus, at least 28% of the visited bureaus are not operating during the working hours according to the activity schedule, and this can somehow impact for example, the issuance of uh, certificates to vote for people that would like to have those certificates issued. We have found at least four situations where unauthorized involvement of oh, involvement of uh, unauthorized persons who collect and record a request to vote at the place of stay in three cases it is about uh, uh, campaign workers of uh, electoral uh, electoral candidate Igor Dodon and in one case it was the employees of a postal office from Tsaul village and here we have to draw the attention to the fact that back in 2016 we have underlined this problem, uh, specifically that the number of voters who voted at the place of stay increased by 22% in the second round compared to the first round. And also compared with the second round of 2016, in the first round of the elections in 2020, we have noticed 
uh, increased by several thousands of voters who cast their votes at the place of stay. And here we have to underline that according to the international standards, voting at the place of stay should be decreased significantly. And uh, uh, it should be available only in order to include the persons that have some special needs in order to be able to cast their vote in conditions of security and secret of vote. As for voting abroad, according to the observers, uh, there were so the decisions of the Central Electoral Commissions were analyzed, and we've seen that the number of voting uh, uh, ballot papers were increased for polling stations abroad, at least 55 polling stations out of the 139 that were established. Also, we underline the change uh, of the addresses of, um, of uh, precinct elect electoral bureaus in uh, four cases in Italy, two cases in Germany, two cases in UK, and one case in Romania, one case in Israel. In this context, we would like to draw the attention of voters from these countries to be attentive and to follow the websites of the Central Electoral Commission, the website of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and European Integration, and last but not least, of diplomatic missions from those countries in order to see the exact address or the new address of the polling stations. Also, we have to welcome the intervention of authorities. It is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, European Integration, the Electoral Central Commission, uh, who, which um, uh, made an effort in order to have a more efficient flow of voters in polling stations abroad by increasing the human capacity, uh, by increasing the number of operators where it was possible, by increasing the number of technical staff, increasing the number of uh, voting booths, uh, scanners, and so on, so that uh, uh, voters to be served as quickly as possible, but uh, provided that uh, the requirements, uh, the anti-COVID requirements are complied with. We have to draw the attention to the fact that Promolex observers have reported isolated cases noticed on social networks with regards to organized transportation of voters in uh, several um, polling stations abroad, we can uh, conclude or we have uh, noticed uh, several cases when voters self-organize themselves. For example, somebody announces that in my personal car there are available seats and uh, two or three uh, voters are accepted in one's personal care in order to travel together to the polling stations. Also, we have to reiterate, because such cases happened previously as well, the fact that the Romanian government uh, registered a draft emergency ordinance by which um, students, citizens of the Republic of Moldova, are offered free transportation on uh, November 15, 2020. We have not yet seen for this decision to be passed. And here, I would like to say that passing this decision is uh, an interesting thing, especially taking into account the fact that uh, most of the students, regardless of ethnicity in Romania, nevertheless um, enjoy the right to free public transportation. As for electoral uh, litigations, uh, after the first round of elections at the level of uh, district electoral councils, uh, our observers have registered that two complaints were reviewed and settled. The Central Electoral Commission received and registered eight notifications and complaints. Four of them were not solved yet as of uh, 
the date mentioned in the report, two were settled and uh, were rejected, and other two were referred to other competent bodies. Courts also received, uh, also registered two electoral litigations, and both of them were declared as non admissible due to procedural reasons. As for the um, uh, activity of electoral contenders, we can uh, see quite a good dynamics in terms of campaigning activities. Our observers found at least 142 campaigning activities, of which 72 in support of electoral contender Igor Dodon and 70 in support of candidate Maya Sando. Most of the campaign activities, more than 50 percent, involve distribution of leaflets and newspapers. The Party of Socialists of the Republic of Moldova continues to get involved in activities in support of independent candidate Igor Dodon. More than 20 percent of activities are conducted by members and supporters of Party of Socialists. As for advertising, also we have noticed at, at least 473 cases of electoral advertising. Uh, printed advertising or on social media. Here we have 308 cases in support of uh, Maya Sando and 165 in support of uh, Igor Dodon. Observers have not noticed any information campaigns um, for uh, voters from the Transnistrian region, which is a worrying uh, situation. As for diaspora, only one life was um, noticed, organized by Maya Sandu, for voters from diaspora. Also, observers have reported a situation of organizing a concert on 11th of November 2020 in the Russian Federation, Moscow, and uh, the EGDs of an organization and in the, w w which is called Dor for Moldova or Longing for Moldova. And various uh, local performers um, participated in this concert. Uh, the concert was uh, for free and um, soft beverages were distributed to participants in the concert. And uh, during this event, uh, a number of messages in support of uh, independent candidate Igor Dodon were mentioned. Regarding the use of administrative resources, our observers um, found cases that can be regarded as use of administrative resources it's 12 cases found, of which 11 uh, were in support of independent candidate Igor Dodon, and one case um, in favor of electoral contender Maya Sando. Here, I would like to underline especially the a government decision that was passed which approved a regulation on how to award annual uh, awards for employees of the public sector. More than 176,000 public officials are impacted by this regulation, and we we have to say that this regulation was supposed to be approved by the government in June 2020, but because of some unclear reasons, uh, the adoption of this regulation was delayed, and uh, this regulation and the appropriation of funds was done four days before the election. Moreover, 
the whole process involved cer certain um, violations of the transparency requirement uh, with regards to how uh, regulatory documents have to be passed. When the draft of this decision was passed, it was put up in public space on November the 6th and until 11th of November it was up for public uh, discussions and uh, before that uh, date uh, this decision was approved already. Our observers also documented a case that can be regarded as use of non-declared funds during the electoral campaign. It is about the incident that took place on 11th of November 2020 involving the printing of uh, electoral newspapers with electioneering materials in favor of independent candidate Igor Dodon. Here we have to underline the following aspects that were made public before the date of 11th of November 2020. And um, the following was found. A contract concluded by electoral contender and a printing house, Editipar Group, was presented covering a general activity period between October the 2nd and December 31st, 2020. According to this contract, made public, the maximum threshold for electioneering uh, materials is 65,000 copies in Russian and 55,000 copies in Romanian. However, observers, our observers, we have mentioned this and presented in the previous report that it seems that this number of uh, issues were printed uh, back in um, October, when um, 65,000 and 55,000 copies were published, and an additional one on October the 7th, when 17,000 and 32,000 copies were printed. As for the newspaper found in the printing house, we have to draw the attention to the fact that it was uh, found on November 11th. Um, the total number of newspapers found is not yet clear, but uh, preliminary more than 72,000 uh, issues were found. Uh, but there are some issues that are worrisome. The first, uh, um, the reportedly the uh, newspaper was printed on the 9th of November, but uh, the newspaper contains pictures from some public events that took place on the 10th of November. Also, according to the current law, according to the electoral code, electoral contenders must state in the advertising electoral materials the date of printing and not the date of contract. And number two, they should include data uh, of the printing house, not the data of the service provider. We hope that law enforcement authorities will review in a comprehensive way this case and will um, issue certain decisions on the case as soon as possible. Also, other situations related to certain electoral incidents were found. At least two other cases of involving religious denominations were found. Both of them were in favor of electoral contender Igor Dodon. At least two cases where in the observer's opinion, 
the public health requirements were not complied with by organizing public events with uh, n more than 50 persons. And uh, from our observers, we were also informed about the intention to organize public events with thousands of persons, including today and uh, on the 15th and 16th of November. We would like to draw the attention of the law enforcement bodies about such uh, warnings and about uh, the need to comply with the current law, especially with the decisions of the National Extraordinary Commission in Public Health, which state that it is allowed to organize public events only with fewer than 50 persons. Regarding the funding of electoral campaigns, our observers have found that in the first part of the week, from the 2nd to the 6th of November 2020, both electoral contenders collected 956,800 uh, 956,812,000 uh, lay were collected by both com electoral con contenders. The spending reported by them, 74% are for advertising and 20% are for uh, advertising materials. The other 6% are other types of spending declared. However, unfortunately, our observers are still uh, finding situations when uh, uh, they have unreported spending of more than 394,492 lei for Igor Dodon and more than 106,431 lei for Maya Sandu. We hope that all of these uh, estimated uh, undeclared expenses are uh, reflected in the financial reports, in the general financial reports uh, submitted at the end of the election period. As for hate speech, we have to underline that, uh, unfortunately, this uh, type of message is still used at least 51 cases of um, hate speech and instigation to discrimination were found. Unfortunately, in seven cases, it seems that, uh, uh, that it was used by one of the electoral contender, independent candidate Igor Dodon. And uh, if we try to analyze who were the victims of this um, hate speech and instigation to discrimination, we can see that in 26 cases it was targeted at Maya Sandu and eight cases were targeted at independent candidate Igor Dodon. The other cases of uh, hate speech referred to supporters of electoral contenders, political parties that support them or other persons related uh, to the electoral process. So these were the main findings that I wanted to refer to in terms of the findings included in the seventh report. And now I would like to convey two messages. First, I would like to thank Promolex observers who will be involved on the election day in monitoring the elections on 15th of November 2020, in spite of all of the pressures that were subjected to after the first round of elections, unfortunately, in, they were intimidated by law enforcement bodies as well. Facts that we have reported in, inclusively to the General Police Inspectorate and the General Police Inspectorate promised that um, they will step in. After these discussions, it seems that the cases of intimidation stopped. Nevertheless, 
we had uh, agreement as a matter of uh, principle with the management of the General Police Inspectorate that absolute all of the findings formulated by Promolex observers, not only on the election day, as uh, it happened, unfortunately, and the law enforcement bodies uh, reacted selectively, uh, we have agreed uh, that all of the incidents are presented in our public uh, reports. And when law enforcement bod bodies claim that they react on the basis of uh, Promolex findings, we suggest to abstain from selective justice and to react absolutely uh, to all cases reported by Promolex. So we are open after the second round of the elections to provide to law enforcement bodies, as we have always done, all of the materials that we have. As for the observers who were or will be summoned by the law enforcement bodies, In each separate cases where needed, we will provide free legal support for our observers. I would like to thank one more time the observers for their work in the, sec in the first round. I would like to thank them in advance for their work in the second round of elections. And I invite all of the observers, not only the Promolex observers, but all of them, to report all of the cases that they observe. Because, as, as I've said, the purpose of our reports is to prevent, to notify, to inform and last but not least, to inform the public about uh, the contact of the electoral process. And the second call that I want to make refers to all voters from the Republic of Moldova. On 15th of November 2020, we will have the second round of elections for the position of President of the Republic of Moldova. We have only two candidates in the ballot paper. So, as citizens of the Republic of Moldova, we have the possibility to come and vote and choose one of those two candidates. There will be no round three. So, the election will end on November 15, 2020. And on the 15th of November 2020, we have to express our will, the will of voters. That's all I wanted to say. If you have any questions about uh, the seventh report of Promolex, I am ready to answer them. Please tell us how many cases you reported to the General uh, Police Inspectorate and if a reaction followed. You said that you still are waiting for a decision, but have they completed the review? According to Article 68 of the Electoral Code, observers have the right to notify electoral authorities. On the basis of these provisions, through our reports, we have notified the electoral authorities. We have not notified directly the General Police Inspectorate. The General Police Inspectorate claimed that they self-reacted on I don't know on how many cases. Because even uh, though we have discussed with the management of the General Police Inspectorate and they promised that they will send to us this information, unfortunately we have not yet received it. And we do not know how many cases the General uh, Police Inspectorate um, reacted on the basis of Promolex uh, findings or findings from other sources. So for me, it's difficult to answer to your question if at least one case was solved. And about 
The activity that is taking place right now by supporters of the Party of Socialists, because now they have a march involving more than 50 persons. Do you think? Well, I believe that law enforcement bodies should step in. They should react in a uniform manner in all cases when the law is violated, be it about the violation of um, health uh, protection rules or about uh, the compliance or non-compliance with the rules related to organized transportation of voters or about uh, reacting to cases of blocking roads. The police should respond in a uniform manner, in an apolitical manner to all cases. That's my answer. And I have a last question. You've said that the number of requests to vote at the place, at the place of stay, but maybe it could be because of coronavirus. You have suggested to decrease this number. How is it possible? Well, as far as I remember, for the first round of elections, a bit above 39,000 requests to vote at place of stay and only about 1,300 or 1,400 cases are related to COVID-19. Most of the requests for the mobile box are not related to epidemiological issues. There are other reasons, perhaps, that uh, determined these more than 39,000 voters to request to vote at their place of stay. According to our conclusions, we have noticed a worrying trend of increasing the number of voters with a large gap between the first round and the second round at the presidential elections in 2016. We have already seen in the first round already an increasing number of such requests in 2020, and we have registered already an increasing number of requests for the second round of elections. Hopefully, the total numbers will be announced by the Central Electoral Commission to see how many requests were registered as of Sunday, because the requests can be submitted including today and tomorrow and as a matter of exception on Sunday. If you don't have any other questions, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. and. Um, I will kindly invite you, if you want, to stay for several minutes more in the conference room because um, we will have a short briefing with the participation of the executive director of Promolex Association, Iwan Manoli. Uh, the briefing is also related to the electoral campaign and organization of certain campaign um, activities for the second round of elections. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm so I invite you to stay for the briefing.